I barely got any sleep last night. Right before I went to bed, our neighbors, the Benito family, started screeching and pounding on our reef about some black, slimy stuff that was swirling around outside. At first, we assumed it was nothing, because they overreact all the time. Mom went to check on them anyways, but the water was so dark and gooey that she couldn't see anything. I guess the neighbors went back to their reef because we didn't hear from them after that. Mom came in looking anxious, and I knew something was wrong. A troubled look crossed her face, and she made us sit down so she could talk to us. That never means anything good. She did this a few summers ago when the water was so murky and hot that we could barely breathe. That day, she told us that things weren't looking good and that we should prepare for the worst. At the time, I didn't know what that meant. But looking back on it, it's a miracle we lived through that summer. There was almost no oxygen in the water. Anyways, after we gathered nervously, she told us that the Benitos were right to be worried and that the swirly stuff is dangerous and can cause health problems, especially for turtles like us. Even though nobody knows where the black stuff is coming from, she said that an advisory was made to stay in the reef. Then, Mom and Dad made us seal all the cracks in the reef with plants and sand to keep the black stuff out. Dad claims he vaguely remembers this happening a few years ago. He said it wasn't nearly as dark as this, though, and that it went away after a few hours. He called it a strange name, something that I had never heard before. Oil, maybe? I can't remember. Since last night, we've tried to stay inside, especially since Mom started to feel strange a few hours ago. She said it's hard to breathe, like it was that horrible summer. I can tell that she and Dad know it's from the mysterious black stuff, but they'd never tell me that. I know they're trying to shelter me, but I want to know what's going on. Thousands of other fish could be sick like Mom, for all we know. Well, that's probably a little dramatic. I'm sure that by tomorrow, the water will be clean and clear. I mean, how bad could this stuff actually be? It's been two months since the shadows first came. Mama's gone now. The swirling, slimy black swallowed her right up before my eyes. There was no time to mourn her. We'd been evacuating away from the coast, trying to find a new home without all that horrifying black around it. And somewhere along the way, we must have taken a wrong turn or something, because one minute she was there, crawling next to me, and the next black tendrils were sweeping back and forth, and Mama was gone. Since then, we've been running for our lives. It's spawning season right now, so the school's together. All of my aunts and uncles started showing up a few days after Mama died. I'm glad for that, because I have a lot of siblings, and without Mama around, I, the oldest, had to take care of all of them. You know me, I'm useless at that kind of stuff. Aunt Eugenie is here now, though, so the kids will sleep at the right times and eat regularly, and Uncle Randall can tell a better bedtime story in his sleep than I can. It'll be nice to have some help for a change. Daddy was supposed to be helping me, but he wasn't really around. I'm not angry with him for leaving me on my own. He needed some time to get his head on straight, and it was probably better that I kept busy. I usually like spawning season. The school all convenes at our home, and we spend a couple of days just catching up. I'll play tag with my cousins and hear all the Mexican news from crazy Uncle Guillermo. Then we all head for the swamp lands where all the babies are born. Daddy always leads the school. He's the oldest, and the wisest, too. He's never led us to the wrong swamp land or into the mouths of ravenous nets. This year is no different. Daddy's still in charge, and my entire crazy giant family is here. But everything's different, because the water went dark. And now we can't find our way to the usual swamp land. And everywhere we go, the black follows. And Mom was gone. We've made some progress, though. Daddy's been leading the school down the coast, and he thinks he may have found the perfect swamp land for us to finish up spawning season in. It's an old place. Little use since my great-grandmother discovered our swamp lands and made it our regular spawning spot. Daddy said it's perfectly welcoming, though. There aren't too many big fish and apparently no ravenous nets. I wouldn't care if the new swamp land was filled to the brim with predators. After so long on the run, I need rest. And this new swamp land seems like the perfect place to do just that. I hope there's never another darkening again. This morning, my cousins Jim, Bob, and Alice said they spotted the oily sticks spreading out just east of us. Some poor seagull had got trapped in the sticky stuff and couldn't lift up out of the water. Jim, Bob tried to tell me that the seagull had eventually rinsed the black out of its feathers and flown away. But what with the broken look on Alice's face, I knew that the seagull hadn't escaped. Today marks the five-month anniversary of the Great Darkening. The ocean is no longer covered in blackness, however the effects are far from over. My family has all either relocated or has passed away. 
Charlie, my younger brother, was the last to go, just last week. I wanted to stay for him because he, when he was here, the darkness impaired his ability to fly. But now that he's gone, I just don't even know where to go. The beach has become scattered with humans again. They must have heard of the Great Darkening because they haven't been here for several months. That was the only positive to this whole situation. But now that they're back, it's almost as if they had never left. The mess that they leave behind on the beach every day is almost equivalent to the blackness that stirs beneath the ocean. I couldn't find much to eat for breakfast today. I used to get my food from diving into the water, but now I have to find food elsewhere because the darkness still causes health issues. That's what happened to Charlie. Because of this, I stay mostly above the water nowadays. Something in the darkness can damage my feathers, and not only can I not fly, but the feathers have become all rumpled, and I be can become cold very quickly. Also, when I was looking for food, I realized that I couldn't stay in the air for long periods of time, and I worry that some of the darkness has already begun to settle in my feathers. Inevitable, I guess. And just like the rest of my family, once it's there, it's as almost as it's it is almost impossible to get rid of. With the flock gone, my day has become quite lonely, so I've had to find friends elsewhere. I've become very close with the crabs on the shore, especially the poppy family. The two kids, Christy and Carlos, taught me to, how to burrow in the sand to keep warm. When I first met them, the parents were scared. I am a bird after all. But I think that everyone realized that we need to keep together in times of trouble or no one is safe. There's been rumors around the gulf that another darkness is coming on their horizon, and hopefully they're wrong. I don't know how much more of this I can take. For now, I'll stay here, 